Listen to this. Stop drinking coffee until you see this video. So the thing is, when we consume coffee, the primary concern from people, it's the effect of caffeine in our body. Caffeine enters very fast. After probably maybe 30 to 45 minutes after you consume it, you're gonna have it in your bloodstream. And it could stay for a couple hours or some people are low metabolizers of caffeine and they could, they could have the same levels until 10, 12 hours after consuming it. Something people ask very frequently is, when I drink a cup of coffee, how much time will it take me to get energy? And that depends. Some people after 20 minutes and one, just one cup, they get a lot of energy. For me or for people, when you, when you start drinking more and more and more coffee, you can have three or four cups and nothing happens. Or maybe you can feel just like a little kick or just a little boost, so it depends. Some people are fast metabolizers, some people are low metabolizers, some people need more dose. If you're just starting to drink coffee, maybe when you get a cup, three ounces, four ounces, five ounces, it'll be enough for people like me that I drink three, four cups a day. Maybe I'm gonna need five or six cups in the morning or during the day to feel that little kick, so it depends. But if we take into account how much caffeine do people need to get that kick, it's recommended that people don't drink more than four to 500 milligrams of caffeine. So if you're drinking four to five cups, it'll be mostly the amount of coffee that you will find to get those four to 500 milligrams to feel that effect that you're looking for. But again, a lot of people just by taking 100 milligrams or 150 that they're gonna find it just in one glass, it'll be more than enough to get that effect. So after caffeine is running around your bloodstream instead of benefits, what are the health effects that we're going to see from caffeine? Most of them and what people are more afraid are cardiovascular and in your brain. So in your cardiovascular effects, what we're going to see is mostly by the effect of caffeine on adrenaline and on cortisol. Adrenaline and cortisol, they walk or they go through a path of the sympathetic system. So that's mostly what people feel when they get like high in caffeine. What people are gonna start feeling with coffee after drinking it, after they have that dose that we were discussing, they're gonna feel their heart beating very fast. That's something that people might be concerned, but that's something that I want you to know that it's temporary. It's gonna last for just a couple of minutes, maybe an hour, but it's gonna last for just a period of time. It's the same thing as if you just go and run. Probably you're gonna have a heartbeat the same way if you measure your blood pressure. It's gonna be the same thing, it's gonna be high. Of course, because you were consuming a lot of energy and you were using your muscles. This is very interesting because people might be afraid, and again, don't be afraid of drinking coffee. There are several studies, and there, there are even studies from last year, 2022, and very good for other kinds of headaches because coffee might be better for our circulation and there are specific kinds of headaches in which coffee it's it's a very fast way of relieving that pain even if you go to the pharmacy check that there are a bunch of migraine medications that come with a painkiller and caffeine why specifically for this effect on your vascular tissue and that effect is going to help you lower your headaches. One of the most common uh, benefits or effects that most people feel from coffee, it's the effect on your energy, on your, that energy boost that you might have. But listen to this. If you're the kind of person that think that you need coffee to get energy during the day, you should be avoiding coffee. And, when, and I'm gonna tell you why in a moment, so please stay in the video because I'm gonna tell you because it, this is very important in the relation of cortisol and in their relation with adrenaline. Let's discuss all the risks of, of drinking coffee because I'm gonna tell you, let's go by risks people might think that are possible and let's go to the real risks. So one of the concerns is, what happens if I drink coffee? Is it a risk if I have a cortisol problem or if I have fatigue or chronic fatigue or something like a diagnosis like that? The answer is yes, but it's transitory. When we have chronic stress, we have high levels of cortisol and have high levels of adrenaline. It happens at the beginning that those high levels are gonna give me similar effects like coffee, but all day long. So all day long, I, I'm gonna have a lot of energy, all day long, high blood pressure. I'm gonna have my heart beating very, very hard and very, very fast. After a while, my body is gonna start shutting down. And that's the moment when you might start thinking, mm, 
I have, I need to drink more coffee because I don't have enough energy. But the problem is if you're chronically stressed, your body is gonna be trying to produce more cortisol and more adrenaline all the time. If I drink coffee and if I have one of those problems, if I have an engine and it's not working well and if I'm driving my car and it's not working well, what happens if I go with my foot and just press it and I'm gonna try to put more energy to that engine? I'm gonna shut it up. It's gonna shut down and it's gonna fail. So it's the same thing with our body. If my body, it's been in chronic stress, it's not working well and if I start drinking more and more and more coffee thinking that I need more energy from coffee, then I'm gonna shut it off. So if I have one of these problems, I'm not saying, and please, chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue, it's a term that it shouldn't be used like that, but I'm just saying only because if you try to relate that term, but it's a, it's a non-correct term for, to referring to that kind of diagnosis or that kind of symptoms. Please try to avoid coffee, and what you can do is try to fix that and once you have fixed that then you can enjoy coffee or if you really want to drink a cup of coffee eventually try to go for decaf. When you go for decaf you're not going to have any of these effects. The other risk that people ask me all the time is what happens if I have a thyroid problem. Thyroid problems related to coffee are the same if you have chronic stress because chronic stress can alter the thyroid function. If you think that you have a thyroid problem because of chronic stress, then you need to avoid coffee for a while until you fix the stress problem, the thyroid problem, and then you can start drinking coffee again. If not, you can enjoy coffee with no problem at all. The other risk is if you have an active ulcer in your stomach. If you have that, you have to avoid coffee because it can burn the ulcer even more and you, can, you could bleed and that could be a real problem or you could have a perforation of the ulcer. Have a chronic gastritis or an acute gastritis that it's not well controlled. If you have a lot of symptoms, well, get an endoscopy and once you have an endoscopy, go and see if you have an active lesion because if you do, avoid coffee, fix the problem and once you have fixed it, then you can start enjoying coffee again. Another risk is if you start drinking coffee with sweeteners or with sugar or with honey. And why is that a, a risk? Well, you're gonna be getting sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, a bunch of things that are just trash to your body or drinking sugar, I don't know, five times a day, four times a day, and then you have breakfast and then you have lunch. And at the end of the day, maybe you haven't noticed it, but, but if you get a cup of coffee and you put two spoons of sugar, then the other two tablespoons of sugar, then the other two tablespoons of sugar. By the end of the day, you have to drink, I don't know, eight, 10 tablespoons of sugar, and that's a lot to your system, even if it's artificial sweeteners. People say that artificial sweeteners are like innocuous to the body, that they have no effect at all, but I think that there's not enough data, and when you, when you try to see that that is really available, I'm not truly uh, comfortable with that data to recommend you or my patients to go and use artificial sweeteners during the day. So I think it's a risk when you use any kind of sweetener, even if it's natural or artificial, or if they have calories or not, please try to avoid them and enjoy coffee the way it is. So who has to avoid coffee? When is not a good time to drink coffee? Well, if you have an uncontrolled hypertension, if you have acute gastritis, if you have an acute ulcer, if, you've, if you're feeling super, super, super tired, not just for one day, for on a daily basis, if you're feeling tired all the time, avoid coffee. If you have a thyroid problem and you haven't diagnosed completely what's the real cause of your thyroid problem, or if you think that chronic stress might be one of the causes of your thyroid problems, if you have any of those, please avoid coffee. But remember, it's just temporary. It's just that you're gonna go fix the problem that you have, and then you can start enjoying coffee again. And before we leave, guys, remember that the best way for supporting us is very easy. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so we can tell you every time we make a new video.